So if you think of when the, from when the internal combustion engine was invented, the way the oil has changed has always been to raise the engine up, pull out the sump plug, and invariably we've we've we filmed this happening. We've we've interviewed people in the workshops, and one of the things they do is roll up their shirt sleeves and show the burn marks on their arm when they try to unscrew the oil filter, which is next to a hot exhaust, because you always want the engine hot when you're draining the oil um, to get all the oil out of the engine. This prevents all of that. Um, these cells are really plug and play. So you can drive up, the bonnet gets lifted, you unlatch the cell, put to one side, put the new cell in the dock, close it, or latch it into place, close the bonnet. That's the service done. It literally is a 90 second oil change. The cells themselves are designed to be reused. So um, each of the cells that you see is designed to be reused up to five times. So when it comes in, it, we take it in, we refurbish it, we change the oil filter within the cell, then it goes back into circulation. And that itself is, it helps with the sustainability aspects. And at the end of it, and then, sorry, at the end of the, the useful life of that cell, it will be taken in and it can be fully recycled. Uh, one of the little snippets of information that we, we've um, pulled together on this system is that if an XL is fitted to all the vehicles on the road today, we'd save the equivalent of around 200,000 oil tankers of used oil every year. And that can be put into um, uh, recycling and re-refining. So that's quite a big it's saving. We, we officially launched this last October. Um, we went on the news. I think the first news article appeared on CNBC in the States. And that was followed up uh, with an interview uh, on uh, Sky News uh, uh, in the afternoon. But we've also gone on to social media, and it's been a big aspect of this, um, this rollout. So we're on LinkedIn, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and also we're on our own um, internal websites. We've got a little fleet of vehicles that we've been testing over the last two years. Um, and this is a picture under the bonnet from one of them. Uh, so what you can see there is the oil cell. Uh, this fitted into a uh, Ford Focus. I think this is uh, a Focus ST. Um, and what you can see there is a five litre oil cell and this is fitted under the bonnet. Uh, this is where you usually find the car battery. So what we've done, we've taken the battery out, we've replaced the battery with a small lithium ion racing battery which sits behind that cell which you can't see. Um, but we've been running this over the last two years, um, looking at durability, looking at the system performance, what's right, what's wrong, what do we need to change. So it's been a great test bed for us and as I said, we've got a fleet of about six vehicles. One of the key things that we had to do is prove this would fit under a range of vehicles. So uh, we took uh, a very small city car and we've managed to fit uh, one of these oil cells under the bonnet of one of these small city cars. So it's a five litre cell, same one as this, same design as this. That was a big milestone in the project for us. Yeah, some of the more exciting stuff. So we're partnered with Aston Martin on this. And the cell is actually fitted as standard to their new hypercar. Uh, you can see it here, this is the Aston Martin Vulcan. Uh, it's a track day only car. Uh, now one of the reasons for teaming up with Aston Martin is that uh, this vehicle has been an excellent test bed uh, for the technology. So you can see here, this is a slightly different cell design, which is, this is fitted in the, the, the vehicle itself. You can just see one of the uh, big air cooling ducts here. So um, there's another picture of it down here. You can see it, it sits in between these two big air cooling ducts, which is right there on that vehicle in the engine. Because it's such an extreme car, um, we've, we've had to make sure that the cell um, performs well in that vehicle. So when you're looking at oil flows, this, this engine produces oil flows which are between 10 and 20 times greater than any road-going vehicle. The G-forces involved with this car are quite extreme. Corner, we've had lateral G measurements of this car, which is up to 2.4 G. That's about one and a half G more than you get on a normal road car. So you, we've got to make sure that this cell is, um, and the oil within the cell um, functions under all these conditions. So when you look at cornering at 2.4 G, it's the same as tipping one of these cells um, to an angle of about 70 degrees. You still, we've still got to make sure that the oil is picked up from the base of that cell under this extreme cornering.